What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we are talking about how narcissists keep score. When you're in a toxic relationship, there is an actual scoreboard. <laughs> if you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. Boom. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I forgot to say episode 993, y'all. I'll be switching it up sometimes here and there. But episode 993 of the Narcissist Code. Boom. There's no, there's, I'm not going to do the intro twice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, y'all, yeah. So I posted a short video earlier today about that, this. And I was just like, let me do another video. Let me do a, let me go into detail about that. Because I had this idea when I was riding on the road. Um, I dropped my son off at school today that narcissists do keep score. Like that's one of the things that a lot of narcissistic toxic people do. Like everything that they do for you, they hold against you. They t it's like they keep tally marks in the relationship for what they do for you. Like and what they do for you. Let me say this: what they do for you and what you do for them are unequal because narcissistic people feel entitled. They feel like their their good deeds are better than your good deeds. Their bare their bare minimums. Or equivalent or greater than your over and your your uh, above and beyond their bare minimum is equivalent or greater than your above and beyond like you can go above and beyond to do something for them right like you go get them you know they love you can get them a custom made whatever for their birthday or something like that and they'll just tell you happy birthday and somehow theirs is equal to yours. I at least I told you happy birthday. Why wow, I didn't have to say that. Why are you ungrateful? Boom, gotcha. No. <laughs> and when you're with a narcissist, y'all, you absolutely know that no good deed goes unpunished. Say that again. No good deed with a narcissist goes unpunished because narcissistic people, like, when you do good deeds for them, they feel like they are indebted to you. When you do a good deed for a narcissist, when you give them a gift, when you give them a present, when you go above and beyond, they feel like now I've I've incurred a debt. Now I owe you. Now I owe you for something. Like because you've done a good deed for me, now I owe you. So that's why you get a lot of narcissistic people that they will absolutely, seriously, they absolutely will keep score. They will keep a tally of what they've done for you. And like I said before, Every, like I said, every good deed is not going to always, no good deeds are created equal in a narcissistic person's mind. Their good deeds are going to outweigh your good deeds. That's just the way it is. And that's not me just trying to be like, well, you got to get used to this. This is me telling you that your their good deeds are going to outweigh yours. Like some narcissists will do good things for you, especially during the love bombing phase. During the first stage of a toxic narcissistic relationship, narcissistic people will do good deeds for you. They'll go above and beyond for you right then and there. But this is kind of wild. The stuff they do you do for you in the beginning of the relationship, they live off of that stuff. They don't forget the good things that they've done for you. Because in my mind, I've been good to you before, so you should be appreciative of when I've been good to you. So when I'm bad, when I if I do something bad to you, you can always fall back on the good times. Hey, remember we it hasn't always been bad. There were good times too. We've been, we've had good times. You act like it's all been bad. You, re, you remember when I did this? You remember when I did that? You keep it's so it's so it seems like you know it's so easy to forget what I've done for you, right? They never forget. Like a, like an elephant, a narcissist never forgets if they do something for you. But let's, let's go, 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 go. Let me rephrase that right there. Not like an elephant, because a narcissist does forget intentionally. Narcissistic people, y'all. <laughs> narcissists. A lot of narcissists have a wild imagination, right? Well, they create things that they might not have done. So, so some of the good deeds that they've said they've done for you, they might not have done for you. Or they over-exaggerate the importance of those good deeds. Like I said in the beginning, they can just say happy birthday to you. But a year, go, year goes by, and then they tell you, no, I got you a good gift for you. I got you a good gift last year for your birthday. At least I got you a good gift last year. But they didn't. The only thing they did was wish you a happy birthday. And now you're arguing on your birthday about how they didn't do anything for your last birthday. You see, they will create things like that. And a lot of narcissists, like I said right here, have selective amnesia. 
selective amnesia, situational amnesia. I forgot. You know, they forget. They tend to forget the good things that you do for them. Oh, that slipped. I don't remember that. That slipped my mind. When did you do that for me? I don't ever remember you doing that for me. You've never been there for me. You've never done anything for me. I've been on my own since this. You haven't done anything for me. They forget the stuff that you do for them because they don't value it. They might value, value it in the moment, but long-term value, long-term valuations don't come with narcissistic people, y'all. They tend to value that type of stuff right now. Like, what, do you, what have you done for me lately? Like, the past for you, is it the past, your past and what you've done for them? Like, that's irrelevant. Like, the, your past, the things you've done for them is in the past, but the things they have done for you in the past, they can use right now because the double standards exist. And that can be a frustrating dynamic to be in a toxic relationship with a narcissistic person that doesn't value the things that they do, the things that you do for them, but they overvalue the things that they do for you. You know, you give them a piece of gold, they give you a nickel in return. You give them a chunk of gold, right? They give you a nickel in return and say, hey, this is equal value because mine, you know, I got a nickel here. You know, you're not gonna find it. You got, gold is everywhere, gold is plentiful. Like you're not gonna find this nickel anywhere. This is a special nickel. This is this a uh, James. This is a Michael Jackson nickel. Whatever stupid, you know, whatever stupidity they come up with in that space right there. Like they overvalue the things that they do for you. This nickel is worth way more than that gold to the right person. You see, they overvalue themselves, undervalue you. That's where the inequalities of these toxic relationships come into play, y'all. That's why I try to, try to tell people, nothing you ever do for a narcissist will ever be good enough because they undervalue the things that you do for them. Sometimes it can be as simple as that. They undervalue the things that you do for them and they overvalue the things that they do for you. Like I said, in the, in the, you can't, y'all. Well, Lee, how do we switch that up? You're telling us, like, you, like, you're spitting fire right now. You're, you're a fire-breathing fire narcissistic dragon right now. You're spitting hot fire on this video or podcast or whatever. But how do we get them to value us more? You can't, y'all. Typically, the only time they try to value you more when you leave. Because like sometimes when you leave, they're like, well, I'll, I'll change. I'll get you a gift for your birthday. I'll do this, I'll do that. But that's just manipulation. You see, you can't get someone to see your value. You know, like the only person, you are in charge of your own value and your own worth. You can't di dictate how somebody else values you, you know? You can't dictate how somebody else values you. That's why self love comes. To, that's why self love is big in these types of relationships. That's why I have my self love journal. That's on Amazon. Lee Hammock, I love me self love journal uh, on Amazon to help you rebuild that self love. Would you have this that outer exterior, that that tough exterior of self love? They can't do anything to you. You are in control. You are all powerful. You are almighty, and they hate that. They hate when you have the power. They hate when you have the control. They hate when you have this type of stuff because they, you know, you, you they, they, you don't really need them. You know, so narcissistic people, like I said, they keep score. Like if you play in a game of basketball, whatever sport you like to play, their baskets, their goals are worth more than your baskets and your goals. You're shooting, you look, you're shooting in the same net, but somehow their ball is bigger than yours and it's worth more points. Y'all can do the exact same shot. But somehow they get three points, you get one point. You get half a point. You know, you get deductions. You get deductions. They, that's, that's why, like, when you give them, you, when you give a narcissist a gift that they actually might want, they always seem to make, to take a slight at it. They always seem to cut it down. Even if they accept it, sometimes they don't even accept it. Even if they accept it, they always seem to cut it down. Oh, I, oh, damn, this is a great gift. I, I, you got it in red, though. I really like the blue. What? So you don't get a full point, you get half a point deduction because they like blue, you know? It's all, they undervalue the stuff. They have to cut it down. They have to undervalue that type of stuff right there. Oh, I love it. I thought you said it was brand new though. It's got a scratch on it right here. And they probably put the scratch on it. That's the mindset, that's the dynamic, that's the space that you go into. They keep score. They keep score. That was it, and no good deed goes unpunished. The good things you do, won't be, be appreciated by narcissistic people, y'all. I'm not telling you to stop doing the good deeds, but stop doing the good deeds and expecting something, expecting a certain response. I'm like I said, I'm not telling you to stop doing the good deeds because they, they might be who you are. I'm just telling you to stop doing good deeds and expecting a certain response from this person because they won't value it the way it should be valued. You know, you have the wrong, you have the wrong appraiser. You have a, um, 
you know, a, a home appraiser trying to value a precious antiquity, you know. So you have to get the right appraiser and you are the right appraiser. You know how valuable your stuff is. You know how valuable you are, even though they might try to, they might try to convince you that you're not valuable. You're not as valuable. You don't have that value. You don't have that worth and whatnot. They'll try to convince you of that. So if you're dealing with a toxic, narcissistic person, just understand, y'all. That's what I tell you. So I constantly have to tell people, nothing that you do for this person will ever be enough. I don't care what it is. It might be enough in the beginning, but as, like, as the relationship progresses, the things that you do are valued less and less. And the things that they do, they expect them to be valued more and more. So they feel like they can do less and it should be valued more. And you you do more and it's valued less. That's the dynamics of these toxic narcissistic relationships, y'all. That's part of it right there. They keep score. They, and they will always look, they will always, almost always let you know what the score is. Sometimes they keep the score hidden, but just know you're losing. <laughs> you know, you don't see the score, but you know you're losing within the space right here, y'all. But y'all have to hop off here to, to do a one-on-one. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out the self-love journal. Um, mental illness out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental illness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos in my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.